back, everyone. We have another expert session here, product demo and uh, expo of capabilities. I'm joined by IBM. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Annalise, and uh, I'm a data and AI leader at IBM. You might have heard that we've announced what's next, and so I'm really thrilled today to go a little bit more into detail for what's next uh, on data, which is IBM's data lighthouse. And let me maybe start uh, to play a video. All right. AI. Watson X. Watson X dot AI for new foundation models, generative AI, and machine learning. Watson X dot data, a fast, flexible, and open next generation data store and WatsonX.Governance to enable AI workflows that are responsible, transparent, and explainable. WatsonX, let's put AI to work. That was cool. Yeah. Was that computer generated? I don't know, actually, so I will need to ask marketing. I, I would presume there's something neat going on there. All right, well, that looks really interesting. We're joined here by IBM. Please introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, so good morning. I'm Annalise. I'm a data and AI leader at IBM. And what you just saw is what we've presented this week at Think, which is What's Next. And uh, today I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about the What's Next.data, which is okay. our lake house. Maybe also to give a bit of context before I go into the lake house part, is, is talk a bit about the What's Next.ai uh, and the What's Next.governance. Um, the Watson X.AI is really where we want to help companies uh, with their prompt tuning mm. and also with fine tuning their foundation models. When you do prompt tuning, you're not really touching the foundation models, but we, what, what we help to do there is also the prompt engineering, right? Like giving some handcrafted examples um, towards your, your LLM. So what we have there too from uh, in, in that studio for um, doing the, the prompt tuning and the fine tuning is actually we have uh, IBM's LLMs, which are really trained on clean data, right? We've been talking yesterday about right. governance, so pretty, pretty important. You don't want to be working on uh, LLMs that have been trained uh, on, on, you know, where there is copyright infringement. We also announced a partnership with Hugging Face, so you also in our studio, you have um, access to, you know, all type of open source models, and then you can also just uh, bring your own. But it's really a studio to work with uh, generative AI models and, and LLMs. So really. How does this relate to IBM Cloud? Yeah, so it is, uh, it is available now on IBM. It will be available in July uh, on IBM Cloud, so you can now already uh, subscribe to, uh, yeah. That's the best and fastest way to get access to these tools? Exactly, you can already uh, put yourself on the waiting list, and then once it's online, you can just start playing with it, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think IBM Cloud is pretty neat. I've, I've used it myself. Um, and uh, the one thing that's neat about IBM Cloud is that because it's a little bit newer than some of the old clouds, it can skip some of the old uh, problems that they've inherited from been, being, having been around for so long. Yeah. So that, that's quite nice. So no, and it's indeed, it's all, it, it's all built. It's also not like old IBM tooling that it's yeah, really... Yeah, it's, uh, it feels fresh. Yeah, exactly. So, and then there is also the the Watson X dot governance, which is a little bit, again, what we've been talking about yesterday, is really, well, how are you going automatically, um, you know, to, to do all your governance around mm. uh, your model. So also things you can subscribe to and, and have uh, more information about. And then I s propose to uh, start my slides about the Watson X dot data, so the lake house. Um, let me open it here. Nope, that's not the right one. Um, it's, yeah, you'll, I will need some assistance, apologies for that. So just, I will already start, right? So mm -hmm. first I want to give a little bit of context uh, of what we've seen in, in the past, right? And so AI governance, we talked about it yesterday. What we also want is we want also to have that governance at the data storage level. So right. Lake house, this is my lake house. <laughs> okay, that, that's not so, a bad lake house. Very, very quickly to set the scene because we, we all know this, it's just to, to set the scene a little bit. 
when we query data, what we want is, of course, to have speed performance while having governance. All of that while we make sure that our costs remain in control. We all know there is lots and lots of data coming every year towards companies. Uh, they say 30% of, of increase in costs every year. And um, they're what we've seen in the past, right? So we were used to enterprise data warehouses that were super, you know, performance was good, governance was good. But at some point, we wanted to work with unstructured data also. And we also wanted to avoid that vendor lock-in, which was also making the cost pretty, pretty high. Also for the story, I, I joined IBM eight years ago as a uh, Hadoop SME. So it's exactly what we were saying back then for the, the data lakes, right? Like, hey, why don't you take open storage to avoid vendor lock-in? So it was, <laughs> it was amazing. But first thing what happened, of course, was, well, the performance wasn't that great anymore. And it very quickly became a a data swamp, right? Like, it was like, oh, well, one year ago, we put that data set there, like, what, what is it doing there? And, and who has been doing it? So that's really what we, uh, what we saw. We didn't have the asset compliance, all of that. And then we quickly saw uh, cloud data, databases coming in, right? Um, there too, I think performance went up again. Also, the, the, the cost went up. We loved really the scalability about it. And I think then, where we went towards is really the, the concept of Lake House. It really brings together everything we like to buy, well, everything we like about an enterprise data warehouse, a lake house, and then also uh, the cloud, right? So when we look again, right, enterprise data warehouse from a perspective when we uh, segregate actually the, the compute, the metadata, and the state and the, the storage. We see that your um, computer metadata storage with an enterprise data warehouse is really tightly, tightly coupled. With the data lake, the metadata layer and the storage, it was already a little bit more decoupled, but still. And I think from the cloud data warehouse, that's where we clearly decoupled uh, the storage. But what you see from a data lake house is that there, there is a clear decoupling of really your, um, your, well, we can also look at it here, that we have a clear decoupling of your storage your metadata layer, and then your, uh, your compute engines. From an IBM perspective, what we are pr proposing with Watsonx.data is really to have multiple query engines. So not only Presto, for example, for your BI, but also uh, Spark for your analytical uh, workloads. And what is really cool there is that you actually have a shared metadata layer. So, and yeah, so that will really make that you don't have um, copies of data because you only have, whether you're doing BI or analytic or um, machine learning on your data set, mm. you, you really don't have that many Can you copies, spend a so. moment talking more about the metadata layer? Because I'm not sure the audience is entirely familiar with it. I mean, I think everybody understands the idea that you can store data in, in your storage and that that can be decoupled from your compute engine. You could use yeah. Spark, you can use whatever engine you want. But what does this mean? What kind of things would you have in your metadata layer? And, and uh, what significance is it compared to the, the way things used to be done? Yeah, so the fact that it, you can also, for example, um, attach it to, your, to our central governance layer. Mm. So what, you, what we often see, right, is that you have, uh, when you're enforcing your governance policies, is that you have them at file level or at application level, and you have to recatalog them every time. Here, right. it's, in, it's built in, mm. and you, connect, you can connect it to our govern catalog, such that you just catalog once your data, right. and you will have it really shared across any storage or any uh, engine. And maybe I can go a little bit more into detail, but mm -hmm. that's really the concept okay. uh, of it. And this has to do with, with all these data governance concepts that have been floating around the past day or two that everybody's yes. talking about. This enables that. Yeah, and it's really built in. And again, it's what you often see is that, well, you need, uh, you see lake houses that are only using Presto. Mm. And then you have a lake house that is only using SQL. Right. But then you need two times the same data set. Maybe. Right, I and see. And then you yeah. have very separate metadata, and then you have to recatalog it mm. twice to say, well, this, these are your governance policies, this not, right? So that's yeah. really the, so that's really what we talk, a fit for purpose, so whether it is your BI that you're doing, whether it is uh, machine learning, Got based it. on an open um, lake house arch architecture, supported by the querying, and so on. So just the three, the three key benefits. Yeah. Um, and that's all I will talk about, and then we can, you know, 
go a little bit more into detail. So yeah. what, what are the three key benefits, right? Is that you can access all your data across the hybrid cloud. So whether it is on-prem, whether you have still the data lake on-prem or in the cloud, also your enterprise data warehouse. You can just connect to them all again have that shared metadata layer, so that's really, uh, that's really key. And as I said, right, because you have cheap object storage, you have that shared metadata layer, and there's multiple query engines, you only need one time your data set. You don't have right. copies, which helps your governance, which helps your security, because you don't have multiple data sets flowing around. And again, with AI governance, we said, you know, it's super important. Mm. The second part is um, you can really get started easily because you can connect to your to your analytical data set, and then you can just start because you have those you have your shared metadata layer and you have those multiple mm -hmm. uh, query engine, um, and then you can reduce actually the cost of your data warehouse because what you do is you can actually do workload optimization mm -hmm. across multiple query engine and story uh, storage tiers. So. What you're going to do there is really to say, like, hey, which workload do I have and which query engine? Like, do I need a really expensive one because I want it to go really fast? Mm -hmm. Or do I take a cheaper one and I have a little bit more time? So the price performance metric, right. you just choose it on the fly. Like, you are more choice. It's not like, okay, it's just that's the only way I can access it. So it's always expensive or it's always, you know, um, not a bit cheaper. So. This is the first benefit I was talking about to go a little bit more into detail, right? So we have object storage and Iceberg, mm -hmm. so as a file format. So Iceberg is really giving you that asset compliancy, the rollback features, everything we loved with an enterprise, you know, with a, with a transactional database, but something uh, we didn't have back in our Hadoop days with the data lake. And so you can have Spark, Presto, Data Warehouse, and then, as I said, you have that shared metadata. So you share one single copy. Mm. The second one is that you, again, we're still in that first pillar of benefits, is that um, you can connect across the hybrid cloud, right? Mm. Often you see that they're, that, you know, other lake houses, they're just on the cloud. So because we are really, IBM stands for a hybrid cloud and AI, um, that, that's what we do. And for mainframe customers, it's also possible to synchronize and incorporate uh, DB2 for, for ZOS. Oh, wow. And then the, the second is what I said, you can really get up to speed in very quickly, right? So you can connect your existing analytics data uh, pretty fast. The second part is what I explained that you can connect to our uh, central governance catalog. So it's, not, it's a catalog where you not only have your metadata, about um, your data, but also about all your analytical assets that you right. have uh, within your company. You have, for example, also semantic expansion, right? Like when you're looking for, uh, hey, I need business info, it will just tell you, well, here is the email address, here is the contact, the phone number. It's something that we see that our customers really asking for. And then you have automated policy enforcement. So again, it's built in. You, you catalog it once, and right. it's got really enforced uh, at all those levels. So right. that's really uh, the key there. And then uh, really fancy is um, because with Watson X uh, AI, we are providing those LLMs that you also um, can now put into Watson X data. Mm -hmm. So you can use foundation models to discover, augment, refine, and visualize Watson X data and metadata. So there too. We're really bringing that generative uh, AI capability even at our uh, lake house. Gluing level. it all together, yeah. in a sense. Exactly. So, so yeah. Well, uh, speaking of that, I mean, some of the things that you've shown here are tools that uh, are open source and have open standards. You talked about Spark and Presto yeah. and uh, Iceberg. Yeah. Um, are all uh, are all these things um, a black box, or is there some way, for example, to um, I mean, it's very nice that that uh, that Spark is a part of it. Uh, I guess I, what I wonder is uh, how much. If you're the kind of person that, that likes to fiddle with knobs and that kind of stuff, yeah. How possible is that? Is is it fully managed and uh, don't worry about it? Yeah. Or if you're really into that kind of stuff, can you can you adjust things yourself? Yeah. So from a perspective, it's it's quite like. Let me also show here a little bit, right? So. Of course, because the storage is open, so this is really where it's ecosystem infrastructure, but that is, is pretty much, um, like you said, the first part, right? It, it's, it's pretty much aligned and it, it's done for you. So, um, 
yeah, it's but there's still a lot to choose from. Look, you have even uh, Avro. Yeah, so those are really your your data format, like Iceberg. That's our that's our five format. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I think in it depends, right? So. Uh huh. But this is a fully managed platform, so I mean, yeah. when it comes to scaling out and that kind of stuff, a lot of the exactly. troubles that you might be wrestling with if you're trying to run your own Spark cluster on-prem, yeah. hopefully you won't be having to worry about that kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly, I think that's really what IBM stands for, right? Like, we're not trying to be better than open source. I sometimes have customers like, but you're doing what open source is doing. Yes, of course, but try to build it on your own and try to maintain it. You will soon become maybe also yourself mm. a software vendor, right? And it's it's. It's not salesperson that are saying that in IBM, it's really the, the technical people. They've seen it multiple times where companies, they try to build their own platform, all with open source, but once indeed you put it in production in a company environment, you have those governance controls, you have scalability, there is so much that otherwise you need to maintain yourself and it's not always possible. So really try to bring that open source part to it and then make it enterprise, enterprise lab ready and, and, and scalable, right? Well, so. as a Hadoop SME, I think you have to sympathize with that troubleshooting the JVM is fun the first time, and then after that, you don't really want to be wasting time doing yeah, that anymore. Yeah, exactly, so yeah, that's a bit what, the, the things like, you know, Hadoop execution and all of that, uh, the push down, so yeah. It's, yeah. One uh, time, okay, yeah. then <laughs> somebody else can take care exactly. of it. Exactly, so yeah, that's, so th this is coming back again of, of what I was saying. I was, maybe I can go uh, back here, um, right? So just, just to reiterate a little bit, that's the third pillar I was saying that you can really, you choose actually, you know, your fit for purpose compute and then your instance right. type. So you're really going to say, well, when I'm doing ETL, I want Spark and as an instance, I want my compute. For BI, I want to use Presto, Cache, mm -hmm. and then uh, for machine learning, uh, I'm using Spark and then, and then compute, right? So that really brings, as we like to say in an analogy, if you're on a on a highway where you you know you need to pay toll and it's super fast, do that. But you know if you want to, it can be a little bit uh, slower, and you don't want to pay that much. You can also choose to really optimize actually your um, your workloads so um, together with your with your com compute. Mm -hmm. So. This is again, right, saying that we have our multiple engines a little bit more uh, showing which ones, the, the shared metadata layer, and then indeed our open uh, file formats like Parquet. So that makes it like you can, of course, access them, right? There is no vendor looking. It's not like when you want to access the data that you have to go through us. Like you can, you can still access uh, the data. And then I just want, because sometimes I've, I feel like everyone knows Iceberg, but sometimes people don't. So I just wanted maybe to reiterate uh, what we were missing in the data lake <laughs> times. This one's a big one. Is asset transactions, yeah, and your your you know time travel rollback features, everything uh, we like there. So, um, so I yeah. think it's really cool that you guys have uh, a couple of different options in the storage layer because yeah. the fact is, even aside from shadow IT where people just buy whatever they want online. Um, even if you're not a multi-cloud vendor or um, customer, you have your on-prem stuff. You have you don't always have a homogenous environment, no. and the ability right. for a tool to be able to span across more than just one environment is very that's, powerful. Yeah, so that's also across not only cloud environments but also on-prem, right? And that's right. really where, why uh, exactly we acquired uh, Red Hat, right? So it's it, it's really our forte. Um, and that's what we see, right? Like you can access all your data quickly across um, across the, the hybrid cloud, right? And then again, there's multiple multi engines. I'm reading my <laughs> my title. <laughs> um, and then again, that you can have analytical and AI workloads. So that's really, um, yeah, I would say the the gist of it, right? So you have cloud warehouses. Like if you look at it from you know, public cloud to on-prem and then mm -hmm. structured proprietary to unstructured and very open. Right. You have their cloud warehouses, on-prem warehouses, on-prem lakes, cloud data lake, and, and we can really uh, access all of them and as open as we can be, right, so. Well, I guess people will have varying opinions on it. I think, um, what, was it us that talked about whether or not you should have uh, on-prem data lakes? No, I That don't probably wasn't no, our team, no. but we spoke about it yesterday and, and uh, at least at these tables, the overwhelming consensus was not to 
start developing on-prem data lakes right now. This, yeah. is, this is an effort in futility and in frustration, but if you happen to have them left at your organization, it's good to know that exactly. you can, there's a path to... We, we did well our job back then, yeah. saying that you needed on-prem on -prem data lakes. But Everyone it, did, right? Back yeah, in 2009? It was, it was everything, you know, cheap storage and you know, I, I came also from the AI space, so that was really yeah. like you go bottom up. Well, right? I mean, the so. thing is that there weren't um, these uh, ready to run, reliable, good uh, soft services. Yeah, no. So, was, you know, if everything that you want from an on-prem lake is available as a service and reliably. Then, yeah. Yeah. And that's, of course, what we say, right? Like you can modernize your, your data lakes with it, right? Mm. So, because you're not going to move everything again, right? So mm. you just want to access it. That's also a little bit where the data fabric structure comes in. I think that's also what makes what makes it really nice uh, with IBM, right? Is that because we have also the, the data, of course data fabric is a concept, right? But we have the tools that support the data fabric approach and that really helps. So it's not just the what's next the data, but you can also uh, connect it to our data fabric. The so for the, for the audience product. that wants to try this out and evaluate yeah. and get started, what's the best way to get started? So, I don't have the link here, but I would just go on, on, on you know, search for Watson X. Watson and X. Watson X and IBM, you will immediately get on the page and you can uh, just click on waitlist because it will be launched in, in July and there right. will be uh, to a certain amount a way to, to try it out. So okay. um, I think that that's really what. Well, that's we pretty cool. And I think, mm. yeah, just the Watson X, right? So. Um, the Watson X.ai is what I just explained, like our tuning studio for, uh, for LLMs. Then you have the Watson X.ai data, and this is really where the Watson X.ai is giving those LLMs to help out with, with um, the semantic automation, while Watson X.ai data then gives, of course, your curated, or the right data um, to Watson X.ai, and then part of it is also Watson X.governance. Um, right where we are really making sure that you have trust, you know, fairness, uh, that we can monitor all of that um, within your models, right? And there also I would like to say, stay tuned with IBM. I hear a lot of people saying, yeah, yeah, we know how to govern conventional AI, but how are we going to do that with LLMs? Well, there is a lot of research we've been doing, and there will be in the future also uh, in our products, they will come more and more, uh, all those features available to be also um, monitoring. Of course, we have already a lot of them, but I think there are a lot of uh, new ones that will come there too, so I would say uh, stay tuned. Uh, interesting times. Awesome. Well, there's clear that there's a lot to dig into here. Yeah. That's all we have time for today, but okay. thank you very much for walking us through, and again, check out Watson, <laughs> check out Watson X, and thanks for joining us. We're going to be right back in just a couple of minutes with another Meet Show. See you around, guys.